May is always a dangerous time to be a TV fan. It's the month when the traditional networks unveil all of their big, bright and buzzy new shows, but that also means it's the month where they cull a number of existing ones to make some room. If you checked out our last video, and you should because it's very good, you already know that the networks have taken out a big old Tommy gun and riddled just about everyone's favourite shows with bullets. On the flip side of that though, they followed up that massacre with a couple of renewals as well. And yes, there are some shows that were always guaranteed to be brought back, even if they hadn't confirmed it until quite recently. Hits like NBC's This Is Us and CBS's Young Sheldon have just received multiple season orders, while other big series like most of the CW's Arrowverse shows or the Save from Cancellation last year Brooklyn Nine-Nine had renewals in the bag months ago. But all of that still left a number of shows on the bubble, with their fates having the potential to go either way. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 TV shows just saved from cancellation. Number 10, Blindspot. Blindspot is a show that just keeps on surviving. The crime drama which stars the MCU's Jamie Alexander is about a woman who's discovered naked in Times Square with no memory and a body covered in tattoos that are clues to solving crimes. That must have been one mad sesh. The show has pretty much lived on the bubble for a couple of years now, but each time has found a way of squeaking a renewal despite its poor ratings. Things looked particularly bad this year, however, when NBC pulled the show from its schedule towards the end of its fourth season. And yet, surprisingly, they have decided to bring it back again. It's not a complete victory for the show because the fifth season will indeed be its last and consist of fewer episodes, but it means it gets to go out on its own terms. The season four finale will reportedly include a twist that completely changes the show entirely, so at least it's going to be able to build upon that next season. Clearly NBC have something of a blind spot when it comes to this show. Thank you James Hunt for once again writing in another pun. Number 9. Single Parents ABC decided to cancel a number of comedies from its 2018-19 lineup and the odds looked pretty good for single parents to join them. The sitcoms which follows a group of, you guessed it, single parents whose kids all attend the same schools banding together to help one another was just pulling in under 1 million viewers in the 18 to 49 demo, which is just a shade more than the cancelled The Kids Are All Right. Clearly, however, they decided that the freshman comedy deserved another chance to really prove itself, and in fairness, it does have real potential. The cast, which includes Taron Killam, Leighton Meester, and Brad Garrett, is solid, and it's got strong writing talent too in the shape of the OC's JJ Philbin and new girl creator Liz Merriweather. I have almost certainly mispronounced the names of every single person in that sentence, and I am very sorry, and I apologize in advance. Given New Girl ran for seven seasons on ABC, it's maybe not too much of a surprise to see the network showing a bit of loyalty to her latest series. Number 8, Station 19. As mentioned in our last video, Shonda Rhimes' Shondaland isn't quite the empire it used to be at ABC, in part because her focus has shifted to a huge overall deal with Netflix, and in part because a lot of the shows simply weren't quite as strong, but the network aren't silly enough to give up on things completely. While Grey's Anatomy was always coming back and will survive when the rest of culture has fallen, one that looked less certain was Station 19. The Grey's spin-off, which focuses on the men and women at Seattle Fire Station, 19 has proved solid enough in the ratings for ABC to give it a third season, albeit with a big behind the scenes change. Series creator Stacey McKee has left and Grey's showrunner Krista Vernoff has been brought aboard to try and revitalize the series. Number 7, How to Get Away with Murder. From one Shondaland series to another, this ABC drama has somehow clung on to the talents of Viola Davis throughout all these years, despite the Oscar winning powerhouse being far too good for a bang average network drama. The show's ratings declined by almost a third in its fifth season, which placed it at the risk of cancellation because it's a trend that's been going on for a couple of years now. The drama, which started off as a vehicle for Davis's considerable talents, with the actress playing a law professor who becomes embroiled in a murder plot alongside some of her students, has become increasingly convoluted as it's stretched well beyond its original premise. Still, ABC clearly have enough faith in it or simply don't want to let Davis go because they're bringing it back for a season six, although there's a fair chance that it'll end up being its last. Number six, Man With A Plan. The cast of Friends haven't fared all that well when it comes to their TV roles afterwards, but Matt LeBlanc has done better than most. Despite the failure of Joey straight after, he enjoyed some success with episodes and his latest sitcom Man With A Plan has been picked up for its fourth season. Sure, it's a long, long way from Friends in terms of both quality and ratings, but at least it's nice that LeBlanc is getting a regular TV slot that isn't, well, Top Gear. 
Things hadn't looked good for the show when CBS decided to hold the third season back into the mid-season, giving it just a 13-episode order, and the ratings slightly dropped off as well. Consequently, it's unclear just how many episodes it's coming back for, but if it's a full season order, then it'll move the show a lot closer to syndication, which might well be in CBS's long-term thinking. Number five, SEAL Team. David Berianaz is an actor who knows a lot about the pitfalls of cancellation, and he's also someone who knows how to choose a project that'll run for years and years. Angel may have been cut short after just five seasons, but he followed that up with Bones, which went on for a whopping 12. Quite where SEAL Team will fall on that spectrum is still unclear, but it's got at least another year left in it, with CBS picking up the military drama for a third run. The show has been languishing somewhat in the ratings, though losing around a quarter of its viewers compared to its first year. But while CBS have been happy to cancel a lot of sitcoms, they've been pretty generous to their dramas. SEAL Team hasn't performed all that well, but it's enough for the network to bring it back. Which is fine, but if this is another Berean Ice show that makes it to six seasons or more when Angel didn't, then I swear to God, I will fling some bats. Number four, fresh off the boat. If your TV show is on the bubble and then the network decides to actually bring it back, you might think that's a good thing, but apparently that's not always the case. When ABC announced that they were renewing Fresh Off The Boat for season four, it made headlines not because of that call, but because of the reaction from star Constance Wu, who wrote on Twitter, quote, so upset right now that I'm literally crying. Ugh, fudge sake. Though she didn't say fudge, and another tweet simply read, fudging hell. And again, she didn't say fudge. God damn YouTube. Wu has since apologized for the outburst and reiterated she's grateful for the show, but that she had to turn down another opportunity because of it. The renewal was clearly a surprise to her then, which is fair since it had lost around 40% of the viewers in the 18 to 49 demo. The sitcom is entering its sixth season, so it's fair to say that it's getting a little stale, and unless the controversy generates a sudden spike in interest, it might be that Wu gets to leave the show next year instead. Number three, Bull. There were two main reasons why it looked like CBS would ultimately cancel legal drama Bull. The first is fairly standard, the ratings. The show lost over a third of its viewers in its third year, falling well down the network's pecking order. At the same time, it was dogged by a real-life scandal, with former cast member Eliza Dushku revealing that she had reached a $9.5 million settlement with CBS over claims she was sexually harassed by lead actor Michael Weatherly during her time on the show. That led to Steven Spielberg, who was an executive producer on the series via Amblin, severing all ties with the series. It was expected that CBS would follow suit, but they've instead Instead, gone ahead and renewed the drama for a fourth season, with the network's entertainment president Kelly Carl telling TV Line, quote, Michael made a mistake. He owned that mistake. He was apologetic at the time. He was remorseful. Michael made himself open to whatever coaching or training is necessary to create a positive environment on set. He took everything very seriously and wanted to move forward. When we looked at the totality of the situation, we felt comfortable bringing it back on air. Even with that statement, I can't imagine that it's long for this world. Number two, The Orville. Seth MacFarlane might be a well-known name, but that hasn't translated into huge success for his Star Trek-inspired comedy series, The Orville, which lost around 40% of its viewers in the 18 to 49 demo in its second year. Fox canceled a number of dramas around it, including some, like The Passage, that were performing better. So there was definitely a chance this series could have gone the same way. However, Fox has a very close relationship with McFarlane, who has been making Family Guy for the network for 20 years now, and importantly, they also received a lot of money from tax credits for filming in California, making the series much cheaper to produce than it otherwise might have been. Number one, Empire. Lee Daniels' Empire isn't quite the mega hit it used to be. The musical drama was a huge success when it first launched back in 2017, with the season one finale being watched by a whopping 17 million people and 16 million people tuning in for the season two premiere. It's fallen a long way since then though, with season five averaging only around 4.5 million viewers in total. That's still enough to make it one of Fox's most popular dramas, but does equally suggest a show that's on its way outward. When coupled with the controversy around Jesse Smollett that broke earlier this year, it looked like the series might be done for. And it sort of is really, but Fox are gearing up to give it a big send-off. In fact, they cancelled spin-off show Star in part so that all of the focus could go on Empire's sixth and final season. So that's our list. I know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are there any shows on here that you are absolutely buzzing to see saved, or would you have preferred to see them get the chopping block? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists news like this 
every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. You've been watching What Culture. This has been a sing song. I hope you've had a good time. Goodbye.